Well, the idea is to turn all of this into a Raspberry Pi 2 portable. Hi, and welcome to the show. So I am getting on with this Raspberry Pi 2 portable Mark II uh, using the lessons learned from last time, trying to put together a Raspberry Pi 2 portable um, that's considerably better than the last attempt and using the lessons learned from the last attempt, making some serious improvements as, as I go. So just a run around the components that I've got together for this particular device. So I've got an iPaz uh, Bluetooth keyboard. This one's actually backlit. So I'm not quite sure if this will come through on camera at all. Get that underneath there. So this one's backlit. Uh, 12 different color backlight on that one and the reason I've chosen this one is it's fairly thin except for the bulbous part which is the battery compartment. Uh, the actual body of the thing here is extremely thin. Uh, backlight uh, like I, I mentioned which is uh, important and trackpad built in along with number pad. That part not so uh, critical but the trackpad and the keyboard together is exactly what I was after. So this is the one I've chosen for that. The 7 inch LCD. This isn't the one I'll be using. Uh, the seven inch LCD is different resolution to this one I put together a few episodes ago, uh, but I'll be using this one just to be able to see how everything goes together. So a new one of those and driver board will be arriving hopefully soon. The Raspberry Pi 2 itself. Um, the SparkFun lithium polymer battery charger, the one that I uh, did uh, an episode or two ago, uh, set up to charge at one amp a nice big four amp hour uh, lithium ion battery. Uh, and if space is available, what I want to be able to get to is an incorporated Arduino uh, setup, depending on space and I haven't quite worked out how everything's going to work there yet. So I've got uh, an Arduino Uno and if that's too big and I still want some form of Arduino functionality, I've got a, an Arduino MicroView SparkFun. So that's the MicroView. And that's just an Arduino in an extremely small package with a tiny little OLED display on the front. They're absolutely fantastic. And if I can incorporate in that into this project, I will. And this is the, um, this is the MicroView programmer. So whether I have the programmer incorporated together with the micro view or I can get away with a full-sized Arduino uh, that is yet to be determined. And this is the Pololu power regulator. So that one's um, anything from three to five volt input, five volt constant output, and at a peak of seven amps and fairly comfortably uh, consistently at four amps. And because I'll be running screen, some other components, and the Raspberry Pi, I won't be really exceeding four amps. I think the, the average is around about two and a half. So they're all of the bits. So in this episode, what I'll do is get to uh, connecting all of them together and just making sure that the power requirements and everything is satisfactory to be all run from that lithium polymer battery. And in the next episode or two, I'll be working on the case clamshell design and trying to get everything as small and as compact as possible. Okay, I've hooked up everything except for the keyboard power, which will eventually come from the uh, power regulator as well. And everything is running, also minus the Arduino, is not hooked up yet, but everything else is running off the uh, four amp hour lithium battery. So I'll just take you quickly through what's running here at the moment. So we've got the battery just tucked away in the corner down here and that is plugged into that SparkFun uh, lithium polymer uh, charger, USB charger. Does not have mains power or external power hooked up as yet. So this is all running from the battery just through a couple of um, jumper leads into the power regulator there. Uh, getting a little warm but nothing to worry about. Power coming out of the power regulator and heading over to this little mess just here. So this is uh, splitting off, running five volts to the Raspberry Pi. And Raspberry Pi has got a uh, keyboard, uh, Bluetooth dongle for this keyboard. And the other five volts is running into the um, seven inch display here, 
with the driver board behind it already. So it's running the driver board and the screen. Uh, and as you can see, at least I hope you can see on the screen there, um, everything's hooked up. The Raspberry Pi 2 is running uh, Ubuntu 14 uh, and it's got the Mate desktop on there. So not hooked up to the uh, network at the moment, but as you can see, everything is working fairly seamlessly. I'm not too worried about the power for the Arduinos because uh, MicroView, I think I measured at 30 milliamps and I'm fairly certain from memory that an Arduino Uno R3 is about 45 milliamps. It's not a lot of power draw. Okay, so I've hooked up mains power uh, just to make sure that everything is working the way it should be. And as you can probably tell just here on this little SparkFun board, uh, the red LED is on, indicating that power is being supplied through the external jack and it's charging the lithium ion battery. And again, everything worked seamlessly. I plugged it in and out a couple of times, nothing gets upset and I'm not expecting once I hook up the Arduino for that to cause a problem either. So, I will be trying to put all of this into a clamshell styled design. The keyboard, uh, the largest uh, single piece from um, the bottom half, obviously, where the keyboard would normally be. And it has that sculpted out section I mentioned earlier. So I am anticipating that I can lay a few of the components that aren't too fat inside of this cavity here. And that will form the bottom half of the device. And the top half will be the LCD, the driver board. And depending on what orientation I can get, so if I can sit the LCD off to one side, something along those lines there, I'm anticipating I may have enough space for the Arduino or the Uno or anything else over this edge here, rather than sit this central right, and have wasted space either side. But I'll give you uh, an idea of what I've come up with so far. I'm using um, Autodesk's 123D design and I've block uh, parted these components. So just drawn them up in blocks, nice and fast and I'll give you a look at what that looks like and how I'm thinking some of these parts are going to get together. So these are the parts drawn out just in block style in Auto, uh, Autodesk's 123D design, um, LCD driver board, Raspberry Pi 2, um, the small spark fun charger, the battery, the power regulator, the Pololu power regulator, the micro view, the Arduino Uno, and the keyboard drawn upside down. So if we just pan around, uh, you can see what I mean by the keyboard being upside down. So the keys would actually be underneath here. And this uh, cavity area here is what I'm hoping some of these parts will fall into. So my initial thoughts are that the battery, as an example, um, that part there should be fairly easily incorporated into the uh, cavity section there, it's, it's not uh, too big. Um, but some of the other parts I really wanted, such as the Raspberry Pi 2, uh, that one's gonna be a bit tricky to try and incorporate uh, in here. Although, it, it, I do have some saving grace because the uh, Raspberry Pi 2, the largest section of the Raspberry Pi 2 is on the front face here. And it's the RJ45 connector and the four USB ports but the rest of the board that's in this section here isn't as deep. So I can actually have this offset outside like you would pretty much see it here um, and have that coming out slightly, having the USB ports and the uh, ethernet port poking out slightly from the side of the keyboard and having the rest of this section here where the HDMI connection and the uh, power connection are, have them inside of this recessed cavity. So that's one possibility. I'm pretty much assuming that the driver board and the LCD will have to be lumped together. And what I'm hoping to do is the battery should also fit nicely in the back of this keyboard, along with the lithium polymer charger. And as you can see by size, um, that lithium polymer charger, that should not have too much problems fitting in anywhere in that cavity. Uh, and neither should the, um, yeah, the battery, the power regulator, and the lithium polymer charger. So these parts here, right, one, two, three, 
possibly four, all underneath this keyboard cavity, also giving everything a little bit of weight um, to making sure that the uh, clamshell unit, when it's put together, don't fall over. The only trick will be, well, one of many, but getting the LCD driver and the LCD display to match together and then finding out how much more space capacity I've got after running HDMI leads, power leads, other wiring and so on, uh, what I've got left to be able to either accommodate a micro view or an Arduino Uno or if I want to get really greedy possibly even both. But I need to draw up this in a lot more detail uh, and work out some of the uh, more sophisticated dimensions to be able to minimize the amount of wasted space. And I will get to that in the next episode. So that's all I've got time for for this week. So thanks very much for joining me. And in the next episode or possibly two episodes, I will be pulling all of this together physically and spending a bit of time trying to get that clamshell case design right uh, with the minimal amount of bulk so, uh, yep, yeah, that'll be the next couple of episodes, and thanks for watching. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe. That would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.